Hey YouTubers, Rob here with another Commodore 64 game. This time we're looking at the classic uh, Gribbly's Day Out, originally developed by Graphgold, um, although at the time they were still called ST Software, and published by Houston. Um, this is one I have a lot of good memories of. Um, it is probably one of the most unique platform I think most unique platforms I think I've ever played. Um, presentation wise it's pretty bare bones. Um, still one of their early games, so it's still a fairly basic UI, but I like that it gives you, you know, the basic instruction on how to play the game. You know, here it tells you what the controls are, and it tells you what the scenario is that you have to thing. Which I thought was a cool touch. So the basic idea of the game is you're gribbly and you need to rescue the little gribblets. So little gribblet is that little white thing bouncing around that I just picked up. Pretty simple controls, you just use the joystick in more two. Biggest battle is gravity. Um gave you some really amazing physics, especially for such an early game. But the idea is you fly around, you need to get these gribblers, there's eight of them on, on the stage, um, and you return them to the cave, which is um, it's usually the area you start with on each level. So I think there's 16 stages all up. Um, back in the day, I n never came close. So in fact, the only way I ever did it back in the day was with a with a cheat listing. Um, I got the game. I got this little late, and <laughs> I actually got it um, on a one of the cover cover cassettes for um, Zap, and they had the had the had the game on the tape, and you. Ah. That. Thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. That black um, monster is Sion, who sort of like the evil, I guess the closest thing to it, Ash enemy for the game. Um, you collide with him, you pretty much get all your energies out. Um, Might as well just talk about the, the, the heart, well, the UI. So basically, Okay, this kind of gets into a bit of a defender moment here. So, we've got... You are essentially... Our, the top left of the of the, the sort of status panel uh, is your side, that's basically your life. Rather than have lives, you have the bank, um, which you can see next to it. And there's two bars, plus a little indicator indicating the number eight. And what that basically means you have ten bars. You start you start a life with five bars in the psi meter. Um, as you can see I've now dropped down and got five left and that's the equivalent of three lives. As you fly around the play area you can collect um, some other little creatures that will give you extra psi energy. Ugh. I love and then when you complete a stage, you move on to the next stage, it recalculates. Um, so I balance that. So you always start with five psi, five bars of psi energy. And that will, yeah, and any excess will get sent to the bank or taken from the bank. So. Okay. Once you're down to the last griblet in a stage, you'll find that the web, which is this giant construct that protects the stage, uh, shuts off. The idea of the web is mainly to keep things safe, and you can you can sort of see these little brown blobs on the background. They're actually like little stars, but they've not come out so well. They've not come out so well um, with the palette used for this first stage. Um, Okay, there we go. Seven out of eight. I have been able to, I had a quick play earlier and was able to get eight out of eight there, but so the idea is now we start stage two. And it's actually a different stage. Um thinking memory serves it actually varies the uh, stage you play through based on um, your performance, so Which I kinda like little little dynamic a little bit of gameplay there for 1985. So, so you can sort of see the, the little switches for the game, for the web. Okay, little switches to control the web. So, 
one of the things I like in terms of the presentation gameplay wise, I, I love the expressiveness of Gribbly. Like you can have a look when he when he uh well, he when you pick up a griblet, you return him to base, he smiles, when he hits the web or collides with the platforms, he frowns. This just this little little bit of details which I like. Yeah, and especially for a game released yeah, for a game released in nineteen eighty five, um, when programs are still getting to grips with the hardware, it's 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 some nice touches. The cover is definitely definitely a little more wild. But if not for And it's any frowns when you flip the gates open. It's oh, not gonna look good. Ooh. This is out of you know honestly, out of all the games I've been playing since I started recording and doing plays, this is the one that's got me wrenching the joystick the most. In, in, just in, in terms of the controls, and I, I think it's just a case of how good the physics are for it. Um, please tell me this. Yes, I'm safe. So yeah, I mean, the primary threat really is the landscape, just being able to maneuver your way around it. Um, there are the enemies, but they're not, other than the sea on the big spider, they're not really... They're not really that much of a threat, they're more of a threat to... Yeah, getting getting in the way of the of you rescuing the the griblets. Okay. Arg! Now I'm on my last life, and I don't even have full energy there. <laughs> so we got. According to the status, it says we got two left. Um, so, I mean, that's, I think that's essentially game, and I think I'm about to get game over now, sadly. Um, the only other thing I really think probably worth adding is there's actually a second version of the game released. Um, happened with a lot of games that, um, um, were put out, like, it happened with a bunch of other games that were put out by, um, Andrew Braybrook and Graphgold. Um, they did, you know, a couple of extra bug fixes to Paradroid. Um, this got a second edition called Gribbly Special Day Out. Um, I haven't played it that heavily, um, because I didn't have it back in my real machine back in the day. Oh, well, that's game over. Um, and that has a bunch of remix levels, and they've changed. The big difference is the font. I find the font, um, that they used in Special Day Out to be a lot more readable than this sort of cursive font. Um, so that's how you can sort of tell. Um, as far as I know, it's basically you know, the same game, just with a whole bunch of new levels, like an expansion pack. Um, I think it was like a different re-release when they released the game, like as a budget, cheaper release back in the day to just change the levels around. Um, so that's Gribbly's Day Out. It's a fairly early platform game, but it's one of the more unique ones I've, I've played because it never got a conversion to any other platform. Um, it was pretty much a C64 only game. It uses the hardware pretty well, it has some nice simple music for the day. And it's a good challenge. I mean, I've found a really joystick wrenchy just, you know, because of the physics, how well implemented they are for a game this old. One I definitely recommend you, you check out if you get a chance. Um, anyway, as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to um, bringing you some more C64 games soon. Thanks.